Hello, everyone. Welcome to our seminar today. I'm David Turner, Director of Standards Development, and uh, I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction to the FIDO Alliance today to help set the context for um, the work you'll be hearing more about, which is our work in the IoT space. So, no surprise to anyone, there's a lot of problems with logging in these days with just passwords. Uh, you know, we're, we're losing billions of dollars as a result of breaches. Um, way too many systems are still exclusively dependent on username password with no extra protection. Uh, people are still writing passwords down, which can then get stolen. Um, you know, people are abandoning purchases online because they've forgotten passwords. Um, and as you'll hear more later, this problem compounds dramatically when you start getting into the you know, millions and billions of devices um, in the IoT space. So there's, there's fundamentally a a problem here with uh, passwords and uh, just using passwords only. So the FIDO Alliance um, looked at this problem and we, we dove in because the problem with the other solutions that were out there is they either added higher security, but usually at the cost of convenience, or they may have been somewhat convenient to use, but the security wasn't as good. So the primary focus was to find that sweet spot where we could develop open standards for simpler and stronger authentication, primarily through the use of public key cryptography. And in addition to that, to help with the simplicity, we focused on using a single gesture approach so that the, it's based on the fact that the user has possession of something and that the use of that thing that they hold, whether it's a key, whether it's their phone, is unlocked by some user gesture. So it's a very deliberate, very intentional action on the part of the uh, of the user. So all of these uh, logos that you see represent the board of directors of the FIDO Alliance. And I like to show this because what it highlights is the very uh, strong and extensive support we have from um, a range of industries. We have payment industries, we have silicon vendors, we have password managers, we have all the platform vendors, um, we have banks, uh, it, it's a very, it, and, and of course, a lot of uh, relying parties and service providers. And the, the importance of that cross-section is that we have all the people who are invested in this, both from a use standpoint, but also from a development standpoint. So many of our participants are the ones that build the infrastructure that supports FIDO and the work that we're doing. Many of them um, depend on its availability in order to protect their services for their clients. Um, what you're seeing right now are just the board members at FIDO. There's 40 plus at this point. Um, the entire membership of FIDO is over 250 members, and they're made up of, of sponsor members as well as associate members. In addition, we have liaison relationships with about 20 different organizations, many of them related and in the same space, so that we can collaborate and ensure that our work is in alignment with the work going on with other organizations as opposed to being competitive or, or colliding with. And we also have support from uh, a number of government agencies uh, who can help provide information and uh, guidance based on regulatory and policy requirements that may come from different regulatory uh, uh, sources. Sorry, you weren't seeing that last thing. <laughs> um, in addition, the, uh, the adoption of FIDO is growing rapidly uh, amongst larger players. And if you look at the, the, again, the different logos here, you can see we have a broad cost section of consumer sites. We have financial services, we have healthcare, um, and they're, they're um, international as well. We have implementations from you know, Bank of China, we got Yahoo Japan, as well as NTT Docomo. Um, SoftBank, uh, it, it's a very international uh, adoption that we're facing. Uh, this is a growing list, you know, this is partial. Um, Best Buy is now uh, using uh, FIDO. PayPal is using FIDO. Wayfair, large online service decoration company, or sorry, furniture um, company is uh, very consumer oriented, is using FIDO for authentication. So the adoption is, is growing rapidly um, across the industry in all types of different services. So the next step in, in, in trying to accelerate that adoption even further 
is to improve uh, the usability and still maintaining the security that's always been an important part of the, um, the value proposition of FIDO as an authentication tool. And so what's been, um, uh, what you may have been hearing people talk about recently is something called passkeys. And this is just a continuation of what we've already been doing with uh, FIDO. And uh, what it does is it extends what we're doing and provides a number of benefits to make it more accessible and more interesting, not more interesting, more accessible and more uh, usable um, to uh, primarily the, the consumer, the end user uh, scenarios. Um, so the first is that um, there's a number of issues that we've addressed with regards to um, account recovery. Uh, in particular, the use of pass keys now enables the ability to uh, back up and restore your keys so that, uh, and as well as synchronize them. So if you have a, a number of FIDO um, keys generated for different sites and you happen to lose your phone, um, say they're on your phone, then you'll have the ability to recover them rather than having to go out and recreate new keys for each of those vendors. If you have multiple devices within the same ecosystem, say within Apple or within Android um, or, or Windows, uh, if you say have an iPhone and an iPad, um, a new benefit is that those keys will now synchronize between those devices. So in the past, you would have had to create a key on your iPhone and a new key on the iPad. Now creating the key in one location will make it available uh, between those different um, devices. Uh, this means that it makes it easier for adoption to scale up because the, um, uh, it, it, it further simplifies the use and adoption by the users. And it also helps uh, users as they transition from one device to another, whether it's due to a lost device or, or whether it's due to uh, upgrading to a new one. Um, this is now live on iOS and on Mac OS, on iPads, iPhones. Um, realize I need to update the slide. It says Android to follow and Windows to follow. Um, Android has now uh, made it available through their uh, uh, latest version of Chrome and Windows will be following sometime in 2023. Um, the important thing to emphasize here is that um, nothing has changed about the fundamental uh, ability of FIDO to use security keys um, for those higher value security scenarios like it always had. So this is not a new thing. It's not a change in what we've done. It's um, I'm just emphasizing that even though we've added some new features to Passkey, the ability to support um, uh, high enterprise or enterprise and high security scenarios, say financial uh, scenarios, um, you can still use your FIDO keys for those very specialized cases or more specialized rather. So to the topic at hand today, IoT. Um, when we were looking at things a few years ago, um, we saw that there was a big authentication uh, problem within, uh, within the IoT space. And given the experience that we have with authentication, given the broad membership that we have within FIDO, we already had most of the people available to start looking at this problem. And just like with uh, just generic um, user authentication, um, the problem of IoT authentication and IoT compromises and cyber attacks is in some ways you could say the same because they're similar, uh, but in fact, in many ways, it's as I said earlier, it's worse because the scale is so much larger. Um, you know, 1.5 billion IoT cybersecurity attacks the first half of 2021. I mean, that's just a mind-bogglingly high number of attacks. Uh, and, and a lot of it is for the same problem reason we had problems with passwords in the past, uh, previously. Uh, one of them is that people use the same passwords um, by default. Uh, systems ship with uh, a built-in password, and it happens to generally be the same password, admin, which means it's easy for attackers to target IoT devices because they already know how to log in. There's a, a core expression or a phrase that I really like, which is hackers don't break in, they log in. And it's because of these uh, low um, authentication barriers that it makes it easy for, um, for, for attacking. The other thing to emphasize, and I know that uh, Richard Kierslake will be talking about this more, is that um, there's also a problem with manual onboarding. 
um, you know, onboarding of uh, a thousand IoT devices could take two years in some cases, depending on the sophistication of the device. So there's a number of very big challenges, primarily around the onboarding and authentication aspects of, um, of IoT. So um, the approach that FIDO took to address this is uh, threefold. The first is we formed a working group um, and it, it, it was made up of, again, all the right participants, most of whom were already FIDO members, cloud service providers, semiconductor manufacturers, security specialists and OEMs. Um, so we, we had the right expertise. That group of people then got together and uh, created a whole series of use cases and IoT scenarios that are of particular importance, um, looked at the target uh, architectures uh, for specifications, and they developed a very clear set of requirements to, uh, that we've determined needed to be addressed in this space. Um, once we had those requirements, um, Intel kindly provided a specification called Secure Device On Board, which was a significant starting point to what we were trying to accomplish. The working group then took that specification and um, modified it and extended it to address the various requirements that had been determined by the working group. The result is a specification called uh, FDO. It's an open standard that, um, again, we'll, Richard and, and others will be getting into more detail about this, but it allows you to quickly and securely um, onboard uh, IoT devices to cloud or on-premise uh, service providers. So following me, we're gonna have a, a few other presentations. Um, we're, first, we'll have Rolf Lindemann, who's um, uh, director of uh, product at Knock Knock, who's gonna be talking about IoT and the impact. We'll get a deeper, we'll get an initial introduction to more detail than what I provided from Richard Kirsleich, general manager of uh, IoT at uh, Intel. Following that, we'll have Jeff Cooper, who's principal engineer from Intel, who will actually do the real deep dive on that. We'll have a demo from Randy Templeton from uh, Intel. And then finally, Paul Hine, who's our director of certification for FIDO Alliance, will go through the certification program that we've put together for, um, for our uh, FDO plan, because we recognize at FIDO that you got to create, a, you need to create the specification in order to define, you know, how these devices talk and uh, how to get interoperability, but uh, in order to assure that you have a high level of trust, we provided this certification program uh, to ensure that a certain level of security requirements are maintained in the development and deployment of the um, specification. And at this point, I'm going to hand it over to our next presenter, I believe it's Rolf. So thank you all again for joining today, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the presentations.